The fifth example was to set up your workbook and your worksheets. And I think it's really important to focus on how you're going to set up your workbook and your worksheets. Because once you do that and once you establish something consistent and you have that checklist that you follow, you're going to find that it's it become second nature and it's just easier for you to work in your workbooks. Now the Excel tabs that you're going to use the most often and they're, they all run along that ribbon are the Home tab, the Page Layout tab, and the View tab. And we're going to take a look at those in more detail. Finally, focus on Excel's basic features when you're just beginning to use Excel. Get comfortable with them, know how to move around in Excel, know how to enter your data, and then expand your knowledge base. So let's take a quick look at the Home tab, the Page Layout tab, and the View tab here, and we'll look at it in more detail and play with it when we're in the Excel workbook. Now, the Clipboard feature, which is on the far left-hand side of the Home tab, it contains Cut, Copy, Paste, and the Format Painter. And if you've used any other products in the Microsoft Office line, for instance, Word, Publisher, PowerPoint, or Access, they're all going to work the same across all of the programs. So if you're comfortable using the Format Painter or Copy and Paste, whether you use the mouse or you use your keyboard, it's going to work the same way here. I've boxed in the features that you're going to be using the most often. That includes the font, the alignment, the number, the cells, and editing on the Home tab. And as I mentioned before, the Home tab is the tab that Excel has put together because those are the most popular features that are on any of the other tabs. Next is the Page Layout tab. And this is where you're going to find your themes. And so if there's particular colors or particular fonts that you use, depending on whether you're working for an organization or a society that has theme colors, or whether you want all of your workbooks to have a particular theme, this is what you would take a look at and make a selection. This is where I come for the page setup, because I'm very particular on what my margins and orientation is. And I also add print titles. We'll get to that a little bit later, but I would definitely keep in mind themes and page setup. Once you've done that in your workbook, then you can work through everything on the Home tab. And finally, the View tab is important. The View tab is how you view your workbook when you're working on it, and then also how you can view your workbook when you're printing it. So definitely take a look at your workbook views, and this is also in the Windows tab in the Windows section where you're going to find freeze panes. Now this was something that we spent a short amount of time on and this is something that in the workbook you're going to be able to spend more time on. We talked about creating a worksheet and I want you to think about the layout that you want to use. How does your workflow work? How much data are you going to have? Are you going to have lots of columns? Are you going to have lots of rows of information? Or are you going to have both? What's your workflow? How do you plan to use the workbook? And what do you want to include and where do you want to place your headings? Keep in mind that wherever you place your headings, you can always move them around later. But if you spend that time thinking about how you want to set up your workbook, you're going to have less cleanup work to do. So once you've thought about the layout, your workflow, and what you want to include, I would sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and kind of work through what you want your column headings to be and play around with that. Then set up your worksheet and tweak it once you've played with it a little bit. I'd also encourage you to start simple and as you learn to do more with Excel, you can always revisit and revise your worksheets. Now here we're going to put together a simple research log. Now. Why keep a research log on Excel? Well, most of us are at our computers when we're doing our research, and Excel is very easy to search, sort, and filter now and in the future. I've included a number of items here, and I want you to give some thought to what you'd add or remove from the headings because of how you work with a research log. I've also shown you the steps that I took, or the basic design for the research log I put together. and. I've listed here what you're going to want to type in each of the cells and the steps that you're taking to make the research log look like it does in example 5a research log. And then once you've finished up the column heading, now you can play with the research log. You have your ribbon on the Home tab and you work through each of these steps here. And if you work through these 10 steps, 
what you're going to have is a variation on this research log. So my research log has a title, it has the individual's name, I use a record identification number and a marriage record identification number because I use legacy family tree for my genealogy. And you might have a purpose and goal here of what your research is. So in this instance, it's a research log for an individual. You can put in your purpose or goal and then you have the research you've done. And I've included the date, the location, the source title, the source type, a source description, and that can include a URL, the comments, supporting documents, and if we scroll through here, and keep in mind I showed you this scroll bar which takes you up and down, and this scroll bar takes you across. I have supporting documents, ideas for further research, and then I keep track if I have put the information into Legacy. So that's what my research log looks like, and as you can see, I have frozen some panes here because I want to be able to work through however many rows of information I find keeping this information always available. And the way that I did that was in row 8 I froze everything above row 8. So if I were to unfreeze it here you can see that I no longer can see the top part of my research log that I always want to keep there. So I go to row 8 because I want everything from row 7 and above. Click on freeze panes which is found in the view section. Freeze those panes and I'm good to go. So that's what your research log should look like if you played with these steps here. Hopefully you'll give that a try and hopefully you'll make the research log your own. How do you gather information? Where do you put it on a research log? Maybe one of these column headings isn't important to you. Maybe you have two additional ones that are. I'd love to see what you come up with.